Ukraine hints at approaching moment of Crimea bridges destruction. According to the spokesman of the Southern Defense Forces of Ukraine, Dmitro Platenchuk, Russia has no other logistical alternative to the Crimean bridge, which is also currently under threat of destruction by the Ukrainian military. Recall the Russian occupiers place old barges to protect the Crimean bridge from missile attacks by Ukraine. The occupying army of the Russian Federation is forced to compensate for the lack of ship and boat depot around the bridge by installing barge barriers. The protective measures applied by Russia cause ambiguity because it is impossible to take the ship boat crew to sea against the threat of loss which provokes the inactivity of the ships at the base. The emergence of a tunnel from Russia to Crimea and other logistical approaches may become an alternative to the Crimean bridge. Do you remember? They once had a project of an underground tunnel from Russia to Crimea there in Infospace. I think this is the right moment to start building it because they probably won't have any other more or less safe ways to get to Crimea. Platenchuk predicted. He noted that after a series of strikes by the Ukrainian military, the Russian occupiers' sea and ferry logistics stopped working. Platenchuk noted that Russia has also not had time to complete the railway connection along the northern coast of the Sea of Azov in the occupied territories of southern Ukraine. The spokesperson of the Southern Defense Forces emphasized that a small circle of people knew the right moment to destroy the Crimean Bridge. According to him, such structures are pretty tricky to destroy. According to Platenchuk, on the Espresso TV channel, the Russian Federation's occupying army kept more than 10 units of ships and boats in the area of the Crimean Bridge before that. Still, currently, the occupiers are afraid of losing it due to the strikes of the Ukrainian military. They are building fences everywhere. Fences along the highway and along the bridge. That is, theoretically, of course, they should somehow influence the route of drones because such a structure can be destroyed. But for this, you need to spend the same drone, and how much the barge will sink is also unclear. Therefore, yes, all these measures are designed to compensate for the grouping of ships and boats around the bridge. Platenchuk explains. He emphasized that the bridge, illegally built by Russia, was guarded by at least 10 to 14 units of ships and boats before that. A natural question arises. If you use to keep more than 10 ships and boats around the bridge, what has changed and why are you keeping zero there now? Apparently, it is necessary to protect it from the water somehow. It's not because they changed their minds, they changed their tactics. No, because they cannot go to the sea. But, of course, it is necessary to compensate for this, and they compensate in this way emphasized the spokesperson of the Defense Forces of the South. He explained that specific guidance systems, particularly those of the Soviet era, can perceive such barriers as bridges when approaching them. Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense detected 26 Chinese military aircraft and 10 naval vessels around the island. 19 out of 26 Chinese military aircraft crossed the median line, which bisects the Taiwan Strait and separates the island from China. According to the Taiwan News, Taiwan also sent aircraft and naval ships and deployed coastal-based missile systems to monitor Chinese army activity in response to the Chinese move. The Taiwan Air Defense Identification Zone, declared unilaterally, covers an area of 492,000 square kilometers and considerably exceeds the island's airspace. It also spans the waters around it, the Taiwan Strait and part of the airspace over the Fujian, Jiangxi, and Zhejiang provinces in mainland China. Since September 2020, China has increased its use of gray zone tactics by incrementally increasing the number of military aircraft and naval ships operating around Taiwan. Gray zone tactics are defined as an effort or series of efforts beyond steady state deterrence and assurance that attempts to achieve one's security objectives without resort to direct and sizable use of force. Taiwan, so far this month, has tracked Chinese military aircraft 47 times and naval-slash-coast guard vessels 44 times in one month. Russia forcibly sends men who refused to fight to the Kharkiv front. Russia is forcibly sending men who refused to fight in Ukraine to the front in the Kharkov region. According to the Institute for the Study of War ISW, the invaders launched an offensive in the north of the Kharkov region when the northern group of forces was understaffed. Now the occupiers are being sent to this direction, awaiting trial. The opposition publication, Verstka, 
reported that Russian military authorities began forcibly sending hundreds of military personnel who refused to participate in hostilities to the front in Ukraine. In May, they were sent to the north of the Kharkiv and Donetsk regions. The scenario for such occupiers is the same. First, they are held in units awaiting trial, then the trials are suddenly cancelled and the men are quickly sent to Ukraine. Russian authorities used physical violence to force some soldiers to voluntarily go to Ukraine, while others were taken from their cells at gunpoint and sent to the front. According to the ISW, at least 170 such cases have been confirmed. Investigators, prosecutors and lawyers did not know about this. Verstka, citing several sources including in the Kremlin, writes that the Russian military is sending conscripts and incompetent reservists who signed contracts with the Russian Ministry of Defense to non-combat roles in the Russian border, troops, in order to free up experienced military personnel to attack north of the Kharkiv region. Recall, on May the 10th, Russia intensified offensive actions in the Kharkov region. The enemy managed to capture individual border settlements. On May the 23rd, the commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Alexander Sirsky, reported that two weeks after Russian troops crossed the border into the Kharkov region to open a new front, the offensive stopped in the city of Volchansk, less than 10 kilometers south of the border, and in Lipsy. According to him, in the Kharkov region, the Russians suffered significant losses and got bogged down in street battles for Volchansk.